Hello, and welcome to the Guest EdTech Virtual Summit Dubai. Thank you for joining us. We're pleased to introduce you to Naveen Valrani, CEO of Arcadia Education. We hope that you enjoy this session, and over to you, Naveen. Thank you, Danny, and thank you, Guest Education, for giving me this opportunity to speak today. Uh, I'm talking about actually a very, very interesting topic, and I'm sure there are and there will be plenty of case studies as schools across the globe reopen to cater to students. Uh, today, this is about uh, the school that I oversee, uh, Arcadia School, and how we navigated our, ourselves through the pandemic to reopen successfully. So I, I thought in order to create some context, um, I thought it was important that uh, we reviewed some milestone dates when it came to schools in Dubai. On the 3rd of March, 2020, as uh, the pandemic was getting more and more serious as we began, as the, as the world began to realize that um, this, you know, the pandemic was, uh, this was going to be a medium term problem and not a short term one. Uh, the UAE Ministry of Education came out and announced a, an early spring break. So from the, uh, the announcement that was made on the 3rd of March was that from the 8th of March onwards, schools uh, across the country would be closed for a period of four weeks. And the final two weeks of those four weeks, uh, we would actually provide distance learning. So two weeks holiday and then two weeks of distance learning. And then the expectation was that we would be back in school thereafter. So sometime uh, in the first week of April, we were expecting to go back to school uh, when that announcement was first made. On the 30th of March, as we were in the midst of distance learning uh, and expecting to get back to school, we, uh, the announcement that was, uh, was made was that distance learning would now continue through to the summer break. So again, uh, schools uh, which had had uh, just about uh, a week or so of, of uh, let's call it training and delivering distance learning, now it began to dawn upon school leaders, school teachers, that this was going to continue for months. On the 22nd of June, again, as uh, we were heading to the end of what we call the summer term in a, in a British school context, the, the much awaited announcement uh, was made by the Ministry of Education in the UAE on reopening guidelines. Uh, connected to that was uh, our regulator here in Dubai, who shortly announced thereafter that they would be coming up with protocols in line with those guidelines. So actually on July 6th, uh, the KHDA came up with a 116 point protocol that schools needed to comply with in order to reopen. And the reopening date on the calendar was 30th of August. So July 6th to 30th of August, we had just about a month and a half to plan uh, and execute uh, the, the protocols necessary to, to reopen schools. So some very, very challenging timelines on, on multiple fronts. Uh, and as Arcadia School, um, a relatively new school opened in 2016, um, we today, looking back, uh, at that phase of the pandemic and, and, and what ensued, uh, we, uh, we're quite proud of uh, how successfully we have reopened our campuses. So I'm going to speak uh, about the different phases until, until now um, and what we have done as Arcadia School in order to successfully reopen. Uh, a very, very important thing, just looking back uh, where we are today, is Arcadia today is one of the few schools uh, that have reopened for all students every single day 
at all hours, all school hours. So for a student who was with us uh, pre-pandemic, pre uh, he or she actually uh, does not have a different school day in terms of hours. So, so again, we were able to achieve that uh, thanks to the, the, the space that we had with our recent expansion, our recent opening of our secondary school campus. So in, the, in what I call the pre-lockdown phase, so, so when the announcement was first made that distance learning would happen for two weeks out of the four-week break that was announced uh, in March, uh, we, um, the priority really became as educators that did our students have the bandwidth, and I'm talking about now internet bandwidth, did they have the bandwidth to access uh, learning at home? And the second challenge was, did they have the devices? We fortunately, as Arcadia School, uh, had implemented a one-to-one -one Apple program or an Apple Distinguished School, and part of the requirements of being an Apple Distinguished School is to have a one-to-one -one device program. So all our students from year two upwards had uh, a device. So we had that comfort going into the, 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 the two-week distance learning period. And, and please do remember that when the announcement was first made, I'm mean, speaking about us, we did think that this would be temporary and we'd be back in school in April. Uh, for, for learners below year two, we realized that devices, that, that they, you know, many of them would not have devices at home. So we came up with an innovative loan program. Again, this wasn't tied to any financial payment, but we, we loaned out devices from the school uh, to our um, uh, foundation stage students and uh, and year one students so so the first thing was every student now uh, we knew had uh, a device in their hands when distance learning was first announced when it comes to bandwidth we have to really thank the UAE government um, bandwidth speeds were were uh, made available uh, at very economical rates um, they were increased at uh, uh, the infrastructure was ramped up in quick time and even our regulator uh, really stepped up and, and was reaching out to us, reaching out to our parents and, and really seeing that do you have the bandwidth to access learning. Uh, the next point was teacher training. You know, this, this distance, you know, teachers weren't trained to deliver distance learning. Uh, that's not what a PGCE or a teacher training college teaches you to do. Um, so we started with uh, trying to keep things simple. We had uh, two weeks of prep leading into the two weeks of distance learning. So we said, OK, uh, let's be smart about this. Let's pre-record our lessons for the first week of the two weeks. So we planned the delivery of our lessons asynchronously. Uh, uh, pre-recorded lessons being delivered to our learners across the different year group, groups by the teachers. We also, uh, again, the UAE government, the UAE regulator, um, the, the TRA acted very quickly and opened up platforms that we could use to deliver learning that were previous, the pre-pandemic were not open, Zoom being one of them, right? I could not uh, make a Zoom call prior to the pandemic. Now it seems I can't live without a Zoom call, but but Zoom, uh, Google Meets, Microsoft Teams, uh, they all they all were made available uh, to to schools and learners uh, across the country. Uh, we decided to, uh, to we initially decided to go on to Zoom uh, for our primary students and uh, Google Meets uh, for our secondary students. Parent technical support. So again, you know, parents did not sign up to being locked uh, in a home with their children during school hours and, and, and acting in essence as teaching assistants and scaffolding um, the, the student uh, to achieve, to achieve uh, learning outcomes. Uh, so we, you know, we, uh, we did have in place WhatsApp groups for parents to share with each other challenges. We had uh, reps. Uh, on each WhatsApp group, we had school staff uh, and we were there. And again, again, 
thinking, you know, this is this is going to be in place only for two weeks. Uh, and then, of course, teacher te technical support. Um, so we had to come up with Zoom protocols, you know. Should you have a virtual background? Shouldn't you have a virtual background? What happens if there are interruptions? What happens if there are technical glitches? So these protocols needed to be defined. And really what we came up with, and I think this has now become also a global standard on Zoom calls, is that distractions, you know, having your child or your pet walking back uh, on the, in the back background is now an accepted norm in Zoom calls. It wasn't uh, back in March. And back in March, we were still discovering that what's, what's right and what's not right. Uh, so, so this was really what I call the pre-lockdown phase. Then, of course, came the announcement that, that uh, distance learning would continue uh, through to uh, the summer. Uh, and uh, uh, now suddenly it dawned on us that, oh, we need to now uh, really, really look at taking this to the next level uh, because this is going to be months, not weeks. We began to, uh, to reach out to parents uh, and, and you know, we were listening. Like, you know, what did you, what was good about the two weeks? What was not good about the two weeks? And again, you know, I bring in the regulator again, to be fair, they were doing uh, exactly the same thing. I, you know, uh, I, I've traveled all over the world. I have been to schools all over the world, but the regulator that we have here in Dubai, hats off to them. Uh, they really, really reached out uh, and and began to work with us uh, and give us feedback on what parents were saying. Uh, the one thing that really stood out was parents uh, and learners and students wanted some form of a social, live social interaction, uh, and they were missing that. Uh, so we we introduced, and this was right away from foundation stage one. So you're talking about a three-year-old child all the way through to secondary school. We introduced every day some life component into into the schedule. Now, obviously, it wasn't um, uh, for for the for the younger uh, students. It was uh, not as much as it was for uh, the secondary school students. Uh, so synchronous lessons became the norm. Uh, we we had to ramp up parent support knowing that this would now be a long-term or a medium-term affair. Uh, so we introduced access. So one of the things Arcade, we're really proud of in Arcadia is that we're always accessible, that the leadership is always accessible. And we wanted to maintain that. So we actually came up with, we, we did some research, we got our IT team on the job, and we came up with, uh, we actually signed up to a platform called um, Tidium. And this was a platform where senior leaders, including myself, were available uh, during school hours to, uh, to chat with any parent. So a parent could log in and uh, ask a question and either our principal, our deputy, our head of teaching and learning, myself, we would, uh, one of us would pick up on that conversation and, and, and support the parent uh, to the best of our ability. The other thing, we were one of the, the early schools, I think we were the second one in Dubai, uh, that came out with a, a definitive support program. Uh, we said 20% uh, reduction in all in, in tuition. Uh, and we did this very, very early on to, uh, again, to support our parent community. Uh, I know not all schools did, uh, but also in addition to that, we adopted uh, the, a means testing approach. So we said 20% off all tuition for all parents. But if you do have a problem, you know, God forbid you've lost, uh, you've lost a job, uh, your, your, uh, you know, something else has taken place in the family, please reach out to us, have a conversation with us. And we empower our head of admissions to make decisions um, on, on the support that we were going to give. So it was really a, a relatively quick process and not one where you had to submit statements or documents or anything of, of that sort. The other really big thing, and that became quite clear, is that our teachers were under a tremendous amount of pressure. Teachers all over the world 
uh, were under a tremendous amount of pressure. Um, again, teachers weren't trained to deliver distance learning and um, uh, it became, uh, you know, they were, you know, when you can't access, when you don't have the choice of going back home, uh, when you're locked in, this, this, is, this is very difficult for any, any human being. And when you have to then put teaching and teaching online and lesson planning and marking, uh, all that on top of that, uh, it's not easy. So as senior leaders, we reached out to teachers. We had webinars with teachers. We had Zoom sessions. Uh, we said, you know, let's, let's talk about this. We're all in this together. A um, couple of the standout things, uh, one was salaries. You know, uh, there was obviously a fear that salaries would be cut uh, due to the situation. Tuition fees are lower. Uh, you know, families were leaving Dubai. Uh, but we never cut a single teacher salary until this day we haven't. Um, the other thing was, and, I know, and again, I know not all schools did this, but what really helped us as soon as term three was over, we uh, allowed our teachers to go back home. We said, go back home. Yes, there is a risk. You may not be able to return, but we will not stop you from going in seeing your family and it turned out to be a great decision right at the time when i remember making that decision I, it, it was it was a high risk decision it, you know we could potentially you know they could have been uh, unable to return to dubai at least not in a timely fashion for the opening of term but our, many of our teachers went back home and they were really really appreciative of the stand we took uh, i always believed very early on that how schools and, and organizations react to the pandemic will define them for um, the rest of their uh, for rest of eternity. Uh, people will look back at this time and say, "How did you respond to the pandemic? Did you ask you did you tell your teachers that they couldn't travel?" Uh, so you have to remember this was a very difficult time, uh, and we really didn't know, uh, you know, how COVID was shaping up. Every day there was a new piece of information. So 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 that was how we. Uh, reacted and uh, to the to the lockdown phase um, and really after the lockdown phase came uh, you know the reopening phase when the announcement was made on june 22nd uh, by the ministry of education followed by the protocols that came from khda on july 6th uh, we we uh, you know we did a thorough exercise uh, on that um, we at the same time also had a leadership change. Our, our executive principal, uh, who's now firmly in place, Mr. Giles Pruitt, uh, had uh, just come on, uh, was coming on board. Uh, and again, you know, to have a leadership change during a pandemic is also not easy. But I have to really acknowledge the effort that Giles Pruitt, my executive principal, our Arcadia's executive principal, put in. He was tremendous, uh, and really, we we shared, our, you know, our values were aligned, and our priority was we needed to keep our students safe. We needed to keep our community safe. Uh, so we ramped up the investment in our infrastructure. Uh, we did something which, again, I don't think very many schools have globally. Um, we uh, looked at research and uh, UV bulbs in air conditioning systems have been killing viruses for decades. So we actually tied up with a Canadian company, spent hundreds of thousands of dirhams. And uh, today, both our campuses, uh, both the primary and the secondary campus, are uh, have UV technology installed in the air conditioning duct. And if you look at the research, that UV technology makes it highly, highly unlikely, even close to impossible to get the virus from an air-to-air, -air, uh, through through air-to-air -air transmission. So uh, UV lights were put in, infrared uh, temperature sensors. Uh, we were again clear, we didn't want a security guard standing there with a, with a thermometer uh, measuring and uh, students. We wanted students to walk through contactless seamlessly and temperatures would be recorded. Um, and connected to a, a, a an alarm system uh, if they if if they were high temperatures uh, and we installed those 
social distancing signage. Uh, and again, KHDA supported us and helped us and guided us on what was needed here. They came for inspections and they really worked with us to get, get it right. Uh, isolation rooms, this again was a KHDA requirement and where they should be located. Uh, and KHDA again really added a lot of value there. So, so you know, we didn't have much time, you know, July uh, 6th protocols announced. Uh, and again, uh, uh, you know, we have to, we, we have to bear in mind that uh, July 6th, the protocols were announced. Um, uh, the, uh, after that, um, if for, we had to submit plans, reopening plans, uh, and, and those reopening plans, uh, KHDA turned them around in weeks. Amazing, right? Here you have a regulator almost 200 schools in Dubai, plans that had to be reviewed and re-reviewed. And within weeks, we had a turnaround and an approval to proceed. So again, uh, amazing, unbelievable, uh, really makes me want, uh, gives me confidence in Dubai and wants me to, uh, gives us as Arcadia confidence to open even more schools in Dubai. Uh, the, given the way KHDA reacted to this pandemic, how positively they reacted. The other thing we did, and again, I think we are one of the few schools globally to do this, is we looked at the accommodation of our auxiliary staff. These are the people that really matter, you know, our janitorial staff, our technical, uh, our, our plumbers, our electricians, uh, our drivers, our um, everyone, our cleaners, and we relocated at our cost uh, staff to accommodation that was not crowded, two to a room. Uh, we, we went out and, and, and rented accommodation. So we spent a, a fair bit uh, of money in order to keep our, our students safe. And again, uh, we made the announcement very early on that all staff would be tested uh, at Arcadia. This was before the government announced the mandatory testing before opening. So we tested two weeks before opening and we tested uh, the, the uh, two days before opening. And again, we were one of the few schools we did it at our cost. We tied up with King's Hospital and they were great. Um, King's College Hospital in, in Dubai Hills and, and uh, all our staff, including myself, uh, were, were tested. Uh, so you had to have, you had to be negative when school started. The other thing about the reopening phase was uh, catering. We had to. We knew we had to cater to a hybrid model. Not all students uh, would be coming back to school. Now, for us, the numbers were very encouraging. Uh, we started uh, with ninety-five percent of our student body wanting to return to school. So it was the five percent that were at home, and we needed to. We still needed to cater to them. And, and uh, we, uh, uh, we needed to get the right technology. I mean, you, you know, teachers, at, in, during this phase, our plan was teachers would be teaching both students in school, but also students who were distance learning. And that's not easy. So really, I mean, apart from Google Classroom and Seesaw, which were our standard apps, and then, of course, the Zoom call, uh, Nearpod really came to our rescue. Nearpod is where you can design a lesson uh, where uh, and students log on and it virtually appears on their screen, even if they're in class or out of class. Uh, and so it was. It was. It really was uh, and is a lifesaver. And then we had to ensure compliance. Right? KHDA had a hundred and sixteen point protocol. We had a. We hired a full time health and safety officer, uh, and we also have a health and safety team, uh, so dedicated uh, and. Uh, uh, you know, health and safety took an entirely new meaning during the pandemic. And really the role of not only of the health and safety officer, but also of the leadership team and, and everyone out there was to create awareness, awareness about the protocols, awareness about the research. And KHDA kept updating its, its, its protocols. And its, uh, so, so it was important that we were right on, right on top of that. And now today we are in the new normal uh, and uh, the new normal uh, is changing. Uh, and the, the research overwhelmingly shows us that the reopening of schools has largely been safe. 
um, and uh, it uh, globally. Uh, there are a few exceptions, but but the spread in schools has been minimal at best. Um, staff, uh, staff, we had to make sure the staff were aware. So the focus now from students, which we which we had created various safety measures and continue to enforce them, the the the, the focus shifted on staff awareness. Because as we know, the economy began to reopen, restaurants began to be open, social venues began to open. So, so we really then now became, uh, it became about staff awareness and how, you know, yes, you can go out and have a meal, but, you know, be careful, make sure you're social distancing, wear masks, uh, try not to socialize with other teachers, right? Uh, we don't want a group of teachers going out for a meal together. Because if one tests positive, then, then the, the entire group needs to be demobilized. Um, supporting a hybrid model, uh, what became clear is this idea of a teacher teaching a class of students in person, but then also teach, uh, simultaneously catering to distance learners was not working. It was too much pressure on our teachers. So we've actually added additional support uh, for our distance learners. We've hired additional support just for uh, our distance learners. Um, parent support, we've, till this day, we give parents the choice that if you are not comfortable for whatever reason of sending your, your child to school, um, you have the choice to switch between distance learning and in-person learning. We genuinely believe that there is no substitute for in-person learning. Uh, and unless there is a serious reason to keep your child at home, your child should be in school. And that is the recommendation we give our students, uh, our, our, our parents. Um, however, it, again, it comes down to parent choice and it's important that we felt it's important. We always provide that choice. We introduced things like virtual parent teacher meetings. In fact, I think they're happening this week. Uh, so that's uh, that was another innovation. And, and some parents have loved it. They said, you know what, we're working parents and we want this to be a permanent feature. So, so that's something that might uh, might remain into the future. And then, you know, I've, I've praised KHDA a few times during uh, this presentation, but they've really and truly been a partner in this process. They have been regularly communicating with us. They've been calling us. They've been doing compliance visits. But these are not, you know, when I say compliance visits, you know, this is not an auditor coming with, uh, and noting down uh, things that are going wrong. This is a, 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 um, a, a representative coming and saying, look, you know what, why don't you consider this? Why don't you do that? Uh, and, and really having a very, very productive dialogue. I can say uh, that uh, thanks to the efforts of KHDA, Arcadia will continue investing in the city of Dubai and will continue to open schools. And on that, uh, thank you very, very much. Thank you, Guest Education. Thank you, Danny Mesmar. Uh, and uh, I'm open to take uh, any questions. Thank you. Thank you so much, Naveen. That case study was very insightful and informative. If you have any questions pertaining to the session, you can connect with Naveen through the networking system on the virtual event platform. We'd also love to hear from you, so feel free to share any thoughts or comments by sending us an email to marketing at guesteducation.com. We'll be on social media as well during the summit, so if you want to chat to us there, follow us on Twitter at Guest Education and use the hashtags hashtag guest at tech and hashtag guest Dubai. This is just one of many on-demand videos that you can watch at any time during the summit, as well as a full program of live keynote and panel sessions across both days. One of these panel sessions will feature Naveen as well, so don't miss that out. We hope that you enjoy the rest of the event. Thank you, and bye-bye for now. Thank you, Naveen. Bye. Bye-bye.